Committee of Oversight and Reform and for our Chairwoman, Carolyn Maloney, in strong support of the Chairwoman's Bill, which I introduced with her, H.R. 2662, the IG Independence and Empowerment Act. Inspectors General play a key role in objectively and independently working to help recover overpayments by government agencies, identify risks and program improvement areas, and root out fraud, waste, abuse, and mismanagement. The work of IGs continues to be a remarkable investment for American taxpayers. For every dollar we spend on IGs, we get $17 back. And this return could be even higher if we gave IGs additional tools which is what this bill does. The IG Independence and Empowerment Act is a package of critical reforms, many of which have been requested for years by the Inspector General community. Chairwoman Maloney introduced the bill with support from Leader Hoyer, myself, and Representatives Lynch, Gomez, Porter, and Liu. The bill would en enhance the independence of IGs in several ways. Most importantly, it would protect IGs from being fired simply for doing their jobs. The bill would allow an IG to be removed only for a documented cause based on a defined list of nonpartisan reasons, such as malfeasance, knowing violation of the law, or gross mismanagement. Those removal protections come from a bill I introduced last year after the previous administration bullied, sidelined, and retaliated against multiple IGs. Last April and May, the President fired the IGs for the intelligence community and the State Department after they conducted rigorous oversight of, of the President himself and his top advisors. In a letter to the Congressional leadership after these firings, nine former IGs wrote us and said, forcing Inspectors General to choose between doing their jobs with integrity and keeping their positions is not an acceptable model of governance and oversight. We therefore urge you to pass for cause removal protections for all IGs. The IG Independence and Empowerment Act also includes other critical protections for IGs, including a provision authored by Congresswoman Porter that would ensure temporary acting IGs are independent and qualified. This provision would require the acting IG to be the deputy IG in the same office or another senior official from the IG community if there is no deputy. This reform would prevent an IG from having a conflicted, dual-hatted role, which is what happened last year when President Trump named political officials at the Departments of State and Transportation to be the acting IGs overseeing their own agencies. This bill would also bolster IG independence by requiring notifications to Congress before an IG is pushed aside or placed on non-duty status. These provisions were previously passed by the House in the Inspector General Protection Act, a bipartisan bill introduced by Representatives Liu and Jody Heiss, my ranking member of our subcommittee. This bill would also empower IGs to conduct thorough investigations by providing authority to subpoena non-government witnesses for testimony. In some investigations, testimony from non-government witnesses is essential. So providing IGs with this authority is often the only way to root out fraud or other wrongdoing. Testimonial subpoena authority has been requested by the IG community for years. And this reform has received broad bipartisan support in this Congress in the past. In addition, the bill closes a loophole that prevents the Department of Justice, IG, from initiating professional attorney misconduct investigations. This reform comes from the Bipartisan Inspector General Access Act introduced by Congresswoman Ross. But this bill doesn't just give IGs free reign. It balances enhanced authorities and protections with new accountability and transparency. For example, the bill includes procedural safeguards to prevent abuse of testimonial subpoena authority and includes provisions I wrote establishing new requirements for whistleblower training for all OIG staff. The bill also contains the Integrity Committee Transparency Act, which I introduced with bipartisan support from my ranking member, Jody Heiss, to require greater transparency from what's known as the SIGI Integrity Committee the body Congress created to investigate allegations of wrongdoing against IGs themselves. 
The Oversight Committee unanimously approved this bill last month. Supporting IGs has long been a bipartisan issue, and Congress has come together before to enhance IGs' independence and to improve their access to information. IGs were attacked during the last administration as political retaliation. Congress must now act to protect IGs, to shield them from retaliation in the future from any president of either party, and to empower IGs so that they can perform the duties Congress has entrusted to them unfettered by partisan consideration. Concurrently, Congress also must hold IGs to account to the highest standard to ensure that they are as pure as driven snow so that when they make a finding, it has credibility. I'm also grateful to Chairwoman Maloney and our colleagues for their hard work on this legislation, and I am open, of course, to any questions you may have. I Thank yield you. back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ranking Member Comer. Chairman McGovern, uh, Ranking Member Cole, distinguished members of the Rules Committee, I sincerely appreciate the importance and need to empower our <laughs> inspectors general. Thank you. As the executive branch's frontline watchdogs rooting out waste, abuse, fraud, and mismanagement. And I support several provisions in the IG bill under consideration today, but I'm concerned with a few provisions in the bill. Title I would dramatically alter the executive's authority to remove inspectors general, upsetting the proper balance of oversight of executive branch agencies. While the president should not be able to remove an inspector general without a valid reason, the president should have the flexibility to remove an inspector general for dereliction of duty or other improper activity. Chairwoman Maloney's proposal would artificially constrain a president's ability to remove an IG to nine specific reasons. For example, her bill could prevent a president from removing an inspector general acting to undermine the policies of a duly elected president. Title III blindly requires the, quote, first assistant, unquote, to become the acting inspector general in any office of inspectors general that has a va vacancy. In doing so, the chairwoman's proposal could result in an acting inspector general who is implicated in the same poor conduct as the inspector general being rightfully removed or who have, may be under investigation for wrongdoing themselves. This hinders the president's ability to appropriately respond to issues and designate an inspector general with whom they have confidence. While I'm open to discussing concerns that an inspector general should not be the head of an inspector general office at multiple agencies, I believe this provision goes too far in limiting the president's authority over a subset of executive branch employees. As well-intentioned as this provision is, in practice, it will likely cause more problems than it solves and represents the dangers of over-legislating. Title V authorizes an inspector general to issue testimonial subpoenas to compel testimony from former federal employees. Testimonial subpoena authority can be a helpful tool for in inspectors general to be able to examine certain allegations of misconduct in le lengthy investigations, but it can also be easily abused. This authority would also allow President Biden's newly appointed inspectors general to subpoena former Trump administration officials under the guise of any investigation, regardless of the investigation's underlying purpose. Finally, this provision provides no due process protections for federal employees and would force them to pay for counsel to defend against and respond to these subpoenas. Again, this could easily be abused for partisan reasons. Without meaningful protections to ensure that testimonial subpoena authority would not be used to seek out political retribution, I cannot support this provision. That's why committee Republicans offered amendments at the markup to strip out titles one and three and amend title five to include due process protections. These amendments were rejected. If my Democrat colleagues would like to move the Inspector General Independence Empowerment Act forward in a bipartisan manner, I would ask this committee to seriously consider the reasonable amendments which Republicans have put forward. House Republicans have already supported several provisions in this bill. I'm hopeful that my colleagues' amendments can be included in the rules so that together this chamber can work to empower Inspectors General to root out waste, fraud, abuse, and misconduct and avoid using them as a political uh, tool against the Trump administration. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, or Madam Chairman now, and I yield back. Uh, thank you. Um, Madam Chairwoman. Mr. Connolly. Uh, if I could just respond <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> the whole purpose for this legislation, the need for it, wasn't because IGs were abusing the Trump administration. It was because the Trump administration was essentially removing IGs who could get close to the truth in their ongoing investigations, including right down to you know, an investigation of the then Secretary of State uh, that was getting personal because he and his wife were abusing staff in terms of against federal uh, ethics uh, rules uh, for personal purposes. Now, we're trying to make sure that that kind of arbitrary um, decision making is uh, is eliminated. That that you, you, we've got to raise the standard to protect IGs from that kind of abuse. But the abuse isn't the abuse my friend from Kentucky just described. It's the other way around. Thank Madam you. Chair, um, if Chair. I may, please. It's it's. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to respond to my friend, Mr. Conley. Uh, first off, go we ahead. need to cite the President Trump did reasonably remove a number of IGs due to their unwillingness to abide by the law and their partisan intent. Intelligence community IG Michael Atkinson was removed because he flaunted strict whistleblower procedures to provide the Ukraine whistleblower report to Chairman Schiff. Acting IG Christy Grimm purposely released an outdated and misleading report claiming there were shortages of medical equipment at hospitals, which was found to be entirely inaccurate and likely was politically motivated. Uh, so those are two instances of the president removing IGs that were justified. Thank you. I uh, support this bill. 